السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ اشہد اللہ اللہ وحدہ لا شریک اللہ و اشہد ان محمد عبد و رسول اما بعد I would like to thank uh, Junaid Malik Sahib for the introduction. I would also like to thank Suhail Sahib for inviting me to this August Bari to give a keynote presentation. I don't think I'm <laughs> qualified to do a keynote presentation at such uh, an organization, such a joint meeting of the medical sciences, engineering, architects, but I'll do my best with the little knowledge that I, I have attained. Before uh, I proceed with my uh, presentation, I was uh, also uh, reminded, and uh, I would like to mention that 2024 is the 60th anniversary of the founding of the Abdus Salam Institu uh, International Center for Theoretical Physics. So this is the occasion of its anniversary. We as a body here, I personally would like to congratulate the center for the great work they had done over the years in promoting science and technology, not only in physics, but also in other important areas of science because of the dream of Professor Abdul Salam, who founded this center, uh, IAEA, UNESCO, and the government of Italy are some of the supporters, but there are others also who financially support this organization. Professor Salam has been very clear in his mission to train scientists or budding scientists from the underdeveloped countries uh, so that they could work shoulder to shoulder with the giants of the West. The mosaic dispensation in these latter days have given rise to these giants, some of whom got Nobel prizes and prizes and other prizes. So Dr. Abdul Salam made it so, uh, so uh, you know, he required it that in all the training sessions that he holds there, many of the Nobel laureates and the top in the fields would come and guide those people who are, who, whom they, uh, the center thinks are the ones who could make a difference. Uh, I was myself lucky that Professor Abdul Salam uh, had invited me at the request of uh, Mirza Wasim Ahmad Sahib, who was the uh, Nazir Ala and Amir of uh, Jamaat of Bharat in India, who had introduced me to Professor Abdul Salam, and upon his recommendation, and maybe looking at my uh, desire to study, uh, you know, higher education, he invited me to ICTP, and I had the privilege of spending some time with Professor Salam. So I think that those were the key moments in my life. At times, his secretary would come and ask me that Professor Salam would like to see you, and I would go to his office. He would ask me to sit down. There was a sofa uh, a little distance from, distant from him, and I would just sit there for half an hour, and then he would say, you're excused. So this was his way of mentoring I don't know, he did it probably to other people as well, mentoring me personally. And I could hear him talk to world leaders over the phone. 
you know, it didn't make much sense to me at that time what they were talking about, but I was motivated. And so I'm saying that I personally am thankful to this institute as well as Professor Abdul Salam, who had such kind attention given to me that I probably didn't deserve, and I, I think personally that I don't deserve, but he was very kind. So I congratulate ICTP or Abdul Salam uh, International Center for Physics on their 60th anniversary of founding. With that, I would like to also say that I was sent to Virginia Tech in the uh, tutelage of professors Mujaddad and Lubna Ajaz, who are the parents of, um, I think we all know, Mujib Ajaz. And I work with them, I learned from them, albeit my PhD was not in the field of uh, uh, Dr. Mujaddid Jaz. I did PhD in photovoltaic solar cell materials. So I would just now proceed with my presentation because my time is pretty limited. Okay, today I'm going to talk about it's a mouthful here, Quranic prophecies, and I will shorten it, and the semiconductor technology. So let's put it that way. To get a bigger picture, I would talk about the purpose of creation. You know, this uh, kind of goes well with the presentation made by Imam Sabahat Ali uh, Sahib. Murabi uh, Ali Sahib. So I would talk very briefly about the purpose of creation, which in the modern age, the scientists and philosophers have shunned deliberately. So in the Aristotelian philosophy, there are four, what we call illa, or causes, and one of them which is considered the most important of them, is the final cause. However, deliberately in the modern age, because of they were burnt by Christianity or the wrong notion of Christianity, they said we are going to cut off the possibility of God in all of research and all of philosophy. This is not what they inherited from Aristotelian time to Islamic golden age with Ibn Sina being the ra'is of all the philosopher. But they decided that they want to do this because they don't want anything to do with religion. That has caused them a lot of heartache as well. For example, the work that I do, this is technology, electronics and technology. In that te technology itself, the most fundamental law is the quantum mechanics or quantum electrodynamics. But quantum mechanics and quantum electrodynamics have no answer to the funda fundamental question or foundational question of why the wave turns into particles. This question cannot be solved by the material laws because the answer lies outside of the materials, because all the materials have been combined into this law, which is written in the form of Schrodinger equation or the Dirac equation. So whenever you have to think in terms of this wavy thing giving rise to a measurement, you have to start with something from outside, which is not material which is psychic, which is rational, mind, or something beyond that, that brings it to, you know, collapse of the wave function, if they want to call it that. So I, I want to bring, the, bring this up to give confidence to our scientists here that we, are, we have actually greater than the sciences, truths that is given by sciences. They have been hiding things and they have been telling, shut up and calculate. 
And I've been doing the same thing. Quantum mechanics we studied without thinking about the foundational question. And that foundational question brings God into picture and the final purpose into picture. I'll have to watch for the time. <laughs> so uh, I will get into uh, what Allah says in the Holy Quran in terms of the foundational questions. Allah says in the Holy Quran, Alam tara. And this phrase is used in the Holy Quran, alam tara, don't you see? Whether it is for singular or in plural, to mean that ponder and ponder again, ponder and ponder again, and yet you will not be able to give an answer to this question. Don't you see that Allah created these heavens and the earth, which is translated as Allah created the universe, bil haq, with Truth, this is one of the translation. Here, the translation is with the requirements, in accordance with the requirements of wisdom. I say another translation could be with exactitude, which answer a long-term question in philosophy. They are talking about fine-tuning of the laws to give rise to life to give rise to rational being, give rise to a being who claims that he has connections with Allah. So these things have been put under the rug for too long, and it is the Ahmadi scientists who are going to come back and then learn from the Holy Quran and then follow with the, their research. And Allah says, in yasha yudhibukum, and he says, you human beings, if you don't behave properly, and this is my paraphrase, if you don't behave properly, he will create another universe. Meaning the human being and his behavior is what Allah wanted as the final cause of the creation of this entire universe, which has been fine-tuned to create this being, this being with conscious mind, with rationality, with ability to connect with Allah. So please remember this, and I will probably skip through many of the slides because of the time constraint. There are many verses, 50 referring to Allah who is the creator, 40 verses relating to Allah as creator of uh, humans. But I want to highlight, there are 20 verses, and I, this is, I counted, there may be more. Uh, so Allah created humans with, or uh, from clay or soil, or you know something related to clay. I'll come to that a little bit later. So in terms of the creation, Allah says clearly, Wama khalaqtul jinna wal insa illa li ya'budun. And the meaning of the word abada ya'budu is to obey with full volition, with full submission. And Allah has explained in the Holy Quran what does the meaning of obeying is, and as, I, as the previous speaker pointed out, that every particle of the universe is obeying Allah. So here, for the conscious being, the obeying is to take on the attributes of Allah. So those things are not going to be known through research, but through the agency of prophethood. So Allah says that this is the purpose, and I have given the purpose here in this Holy Quran clearly and in the previous books as well. So, Sibghatallah wa man ahsanu min Allahi sabgha. So, it, it means the attributes of Allah are the ones which we must emulate in our life. If we don't do that, Allah says, I would take away this whole universe, including you, and create another universe. So, I will move on. Allah says in one of the hadith, uh, this is Hadith Qudsi, Kuntu kanzam makhfiyan fa ahbabtu an orafa fa khalaqtul khalqa. Allah says to the Holy Prophet that I was 
a hidden treasure which I would, lo I would, I want, I love to be recognized. So I created human beings. So, so, and then in a, another hadith of Qudsi, Allah says to the Holy Prophet in a very intimate conversation with the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لَوْ لَكَ لَمَا If it were not your creation, O Muhammad, I would not have created the universe. So we understand that it is the progression of this entire universe toward the goal that Allah had given to this creation that he started at some point, okay? And so when I say at some point, I don't mean at some point in time or at some point in space because he created this space and time to meet this purpose. Then uh, what we also see from the hadith, hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, this is from Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha, that kana khuluqu nabiyillahi al-Qur'an, that Prophet Muhammad ﷺ was Qur'an personified. So when we think of Qur'an, we, we think of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he is actual Qur'an put in action. That's why Sunnah is important for us. I would like to just mention very briefly in the verse, Ar-Rahman allama al-Qur'an khalaq al-insan allamahu al-bayan al-shamsu wal-qamaru bi husman Surah Ar-Rahman. And in this Allah, in this, Sayyidina Masimah Salatu Salam wrote a book, Minan Ar-Rahman, that I studied over the summer in uh, Haifa. He, there, uh, the Holy, uh, the Masimah Salatu Salam says, Quran is the source, and Bayan is the Arabic language. Arabic language is the reflection of the Quran on the human being. So I have run out of most of my time. Let me kind of uh, come back to my subject matter. <laughs> so the, 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 the summary or the overall picture that I wanted to create. Allah says that I have created human being from sulalatim min teen, from the extract of clay. And clay is predominantly silicates or silica or quartz. And silicon is extracted from silicate quartz and then purified and then turned into a single crystal, 99.9999999 purity. And then out of this thin film of silicon, we create the modern semiconductor devices such as microprocessor units, such as the graphic processing units, and so on and so forth. All of humanity right now depends upon all of the products made out of this material. So if I remove silicon, if Allah gives an order to silicon, don't behave the way I told you to behave, we will all go down instantaneously to stone ages. Our washing machine is not gonna work, nothing is gonna work, we cannot fly, we cannot communicate. Everything depends upon silicon. So I say this in modern age, Man is truly made of sulala of teen, which is silicon. And I wanted to go over some more things here, but I would like to take you to another set of verses from Surah At-Tur. It says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, by the Mount Tur, by a book serially transmitted this is mastur, means something which moves in satar. Fi raqqin manshur, in a thin film which is spread all over. So I conclude my presentation with a request for everybody to think about these verses 
and see how Allah had in the Holy Quran, pro, you know, projected what we are seeing and living in these days. But there is a very uh, severe warning at the end of this one. We must remember that that warning will come to meet humanity unless we as Ahmadis don't go out and do our part to bring Allah so that we all and the world itself becomes in the sibgha of Allah, in the colors of Allah. Thank you very much. Jazakumullah.